The Seltos has been known for being one of the best Kias for off-roading. And now with this 2024 refresh, it's one of the best looking small SUVs competing with the Chevy Trailblazer and the Nissan Kicks. Okay, so let's talk about the refresh done to this exterior. So in the front, you get a larger grille and LED headlights. In the rear are new taillights and a new lower bumper. There are new wheel designs, including this one right here. You can get the roof body colored like this one, or you can get it black or white. And they also have two new paint colors called Pluton Blue and Valais Green. So under the hood, we've got a 1.6 liter turbo four cylinder with 195 horsepower, 195 foot pounds of torque. Tied to an eight speed automatic transmission, your fuel economy is going to come in at 25 in the city, 27 in the highway and 26 mile per gallon average. Okay, so let's take a look at the cargo space back here. It's got a decent amount of room. It's about 26.6 cubic feet, or we've got about 42 inches wide and about 34 inches deep. So dropping the second row, we now get 62.8 cubic feet, or let's check out how deep it is now. That is gonna be just about 66 inches deep. So that's gonna give you a lot of room back here. You might actually be able to sleep back here if you needed to. Before we take a look at the inside, can you go down, hit the subscribe button, because the more subscribers I have, the more cars I can get, the more reviews I can bring to you. So go down there, click that subscribe button, and I'll see you inside the car. This refreshed 2024 Kia Seltos, it has best in class headroom and legroom. So let's go inside and see what else they updated. You are going to see a new dash with a dual panoramic screen, a 10.25 inch driver display and infotainment screen, a Bose audio system. It also has the heated and ventilated seats and a sound absorbing windshield. We have got the brown interior. There's a lot of options and they chose this caramel color in here and it does look really good with the black. You can see here's that Bose system right there. There's your window buttons. This is a soft leather material right here, really nice. I do like these handles and I think these grill covers are awesome. The way they have these geometric shapes in here just really look pretty cool. Gives it a little touch of uniqueness. If you look at the seats, here we've got powered seats, including lumbar, very nice seats. They are, heat, like I said, heated and ventilated. Let's hop inside and get a little closer look in here. Come across here. This is a uh, soft material, not too bad. This is a harder, a little scratchy material, but that's okay. Not a big deal. And you can see the big speaker up here for that Bose system. Now let's pan back. You can see this dual panoramic screen right here. Pretty awesome. You do have your driver's display right there. You can display different things in the center part there. Uh, it's got a few different pages to go through some things there. One thing that's different with Hyundai and Kia uh, is that they have the RPMs on this side, speedometer on that side, so you can have your digital speedometer in the middle if you would prefer it that way. Over here on the infotainment screen, this thing is nice. This is your calm screen, just gives you your time. If you have media connected, it'll play that and it'll have it listed down here or um, it'll also do your satellite radio will be listed across there. It has this kind of faded out um, navigation here. And then go over here, here are all the buttons that you need. You got navigation, get your phone connections, all of that type of stuff, go to setup. This is where you can go into your vehicle settings. And this is all your driver assistance features. And we do have a video up on this whole tech side of everything, explaining all of the driver display, the infotainment screen, and all these driver assistance features with us driving and showing how they work. And then you go across here and you can set up different 
things here. Um, you go into the setup, then you just have this one screen that does all of your other connections. Now this is a wired Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It is not wireless. You have your climate control right down here, and I love that it does have buttons. It does have some quick buttons right here for your map and navigation, so you don't have to do everything up in the screen, which is really nice. So you've got your temperature controls, auto, whatever you need here. It is not dual climate control um, in this vehicle here. And then um, you get, just got your volume and your tuning. You go down a little bit farther, you do have a 12 volt plug down here. And back here you do have your USB, which is gonna connect your um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And this one over here is going to charge your phones. This will charge your phone while it's plugged in also, but this is just a dedicated charger on this side. Drive modes are right here. You got your standard shifter right here, which I really like. You do have a four wheel or all wheel drive lock. Like I said earlier, we do have heated and ventilated seats in this one. And then you do have your parking and reverse cameras there. So that's your view that you get to see there. And it does have keeps the navigation up there. And you have one other view and that's an overview. So you can see from the top down, it looks pretty good. Um, it's not too bad, might be a little high uh, on it. But other than that, um, the picture looks pretty good. You do also have hill descent control there. You got a parking brake, electronic parking brake there, and you do have auto hold in this one. And then you just have a little container right here that you can put your keys or whatever there, change or something like that. Two cup holders, you do have a center armrest. Inside the center armrest, it is a decent size. This is a set of safety glasses and a badge in there, and you can see that pretty good size in there. All right, move over here and we do have Nice glove box, not too bad. I'm not sure why we have to have this big of a manual for um, this car, but <laughs> I guess big manual for a little car. Is that how that works? All right, now let's look at the steering wheel. This is just a standard Kia and Hyundai steering wheel. Basic layout, um, every one of them is exactly the same. So we have got, this is your for your center display up there. Press that and change those. And then this one here is your cruise control. You've got your cruise up and down. Um, and then you do have, this is your page button for your center display to change that. You do have adaptive cruise and lane centering. On this side, you have different mode buttons for your stereo and that's gonna control your volume, your um, next button, phone call and favorites button which you can program inside the infotainment screen. This one is optioned with the sunroof, which was about a $1,200 option, I believe. Let's go hop in the back. I'm about six foot, so let's see how I fit back there. Okay, let's check out the back seating area. Hop in here. Driver's seat is set in my driving position, and there's actually a decent amount of room back here. Got all about, a half inch or inch or so bef between my knees and the seat back. And this is a little hard, so I wouldn't wanna be pushed up against this. That actually probably would hurt your knees a little bit. Headroom, sitting up straight um, is really good. I do have about an inch and a half, two inches above my head, so that is really good. So why don't you come on in here and take a look at what accessories we've got back here. Here is the rear door panel. You got a nice little cubby hole right down here. You have ventilation back here, two USB-C plugs, little cubby hole right here, maybe for hold your cell phone. The door grills for the speakers are the same as the front, which is nice that they carried that back through here. So now you can see my headroom sitting up straight. I easily have almost three fingers up above my head, so you can see I've got about that much space. So that's pretty good back here. Really surprising the size of a car. So you also do have a center armrest with cup holders. Standard features are going to include a high beam assist, driver attention warning, and lane keep assist. As for pricing, 
The base LX starts at $24,490. The top SX starts at $30,090. And this one, as tested with options and destination fees, comes in at $33,000. $185. Okay, so you guys have seen the inside and the outside. So let's go take this for a drive and see how it handles. Maybe we'll see how quick it is. So driving this car this week, um, you know, I really wasn't sure what to expect from it. I've never driven a Seltos, um, so I didn't get to experience the previous uh, version before this refresh. The refresh in here looks amazing with this dual screen uh, that we've got here. It's kind of going to the direction that most of the Kias and Hyundais are going. Uh, so it's kind of laid out across all of their uh, models. And um, I like the way that they kept the steering wheel the same. The buttons are all the same as the other models. Really just uh, makes you feel comfortable in here. Now, normally I wouldn't think that a 1.6 liter turbo engine is going to be enough for a car but with the size of this one it actually is pretty good it's quiet it doesn't make a lot of noise and when that turbo kicks in it really gives you a lot of power which is really awesome so we are going to test out that power right now now the 060 is not going to be anything crazy it is a small car with a four-cylinder engine but let's just see how well it actually does and what this engine sounds like when you're laying the power down. We will switch over to sport. So we are in sport mode. We're gonna give a little bit of brake torque, a little bit, about 2000 RPMs and one, two, three. Wow, that actually, you can, it actually is pulling that front end up. That is nice. There is 16. That was actually really, really good. I'm really impressed by that. Wow. Like I said, this engine is actually pretty good. I'm really, really shocked and really surprised at this. Wow, that's impressive. So overall, you know, the, the ride comfort is great. Um, it feels really good cornering maneuvers actually feel really good you know there's not a whole lot of body sway you know they did an excellent job with this haven't had too many downfalls except for the wired android auto and apple carplay that is kind of a um, a miss i feel when you're getting in especially in the upper trims so it seems a little odd. We've kind of noticed that the Kia and Hyundai's, when they, they're good, higher up trims and their models that have that good uh, infotainment screen, it's a wire connection, but some of the lower models have a not as good a screen or not as big a screen and it has wireless. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. That is something that they really need to change. It just needs to go wireless across the board. This does have um, a great driver assistance system. It has a highway driver assist on it, and it is not the full highway driver assist. So this does not have the blind spot monitoring in the um, display that has the cameras that show the sides. Uh, if you have that, then you do get automatic lane change. So you just uh, do the little tap with your turn signal, the little three flash or five flash turn signal, and if there is enough room for it and there's no one coming, then it will change lanes on its own. This one does not have that, so you have to go up to um, the next model above this one, and it's the highest trim in that one, and that's where you get those functions. Um, it is really nice, but the driver assistance feature that's on this one um, it does do lane centering and lane keep assist, lane warn, lane departure warning, all of that stuff. And it does a really, really good job of keeping you in your lane. Windy days, it does kind of push it around a little bit and it will, um, you know, notify you a little more to take control. Um, and it, the one thing with Hyundai and Kia driver assist that they use together 
it likes to drive on its own. So <laughs> when you're looking at, um, you know, it popping up on the screen and telling you, put your hands on the wheel, put your hands on the wheel, and all these other ones that have eye trackers that tell you, keep your eye on the road, you get into a Kia with a highway driver assist or a Hyundai with a highway driver assist, and it will drive for a very long time by itself without your hands on the wheel and without it telling you to put your hands on the wheel. So it's a really nice function. Um, it probably is not the greatest uh, at safety. I don't know if that's a safety issue or not, but we love it. Our Tucson does the same thing. We don't have any issues. Um, I'm driving this whole time. Still hasn't told me to put my hands on the wheel. You know, we're cruising down through here. We've got people parked on the side of the road. Still nothing. It's still not telling me to put my hands on the wheel yet. Um, it's getting close to the line here. There it now has keep your hands on the steering wheel. So I don't know how long that was. Probably two or three minutes or so. Uh, we have driven in excess of 10, 15, 20 minutes before without it ever telling us anything. But other than that, um, I think this car is great for a couple. Um, maybe for small, if you have small children, cargo area is not very big. Um, it's it's okay. Like I said, for a couple, it would be okay. Maybe some small kids, but if you're looking at this as a family vehicle to take trips and stuff in, gas mileage you're going to be okay with. But I don't know about getting all of your stuff in the cargo area back there. So. Um, that is something to consider. I really don't have too many uh, downsides to this car, especially when you can, this one's fully loaded and you can get it for under $35,000 fully loaded. And even starting out on your base model at 24,000, that is simply amazing. I would like to congratulate Kia on making a very nice, decent car at a good price point something that you would be happy with, something you'd be happy to own. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Click on one of the videos that's up here on the screen. It's gonna basically gonna be one of the ones that YouTube thinks that you're gonna like next, and I think you're going to like it too. So make sure you click that, hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like this video, and I will see you in the next one.